Hello, so in this example, in this video, we're going to look at another example of an ODE, and actually we're going to look at the case where we have equal roots, okay? And here's, our, here's the example that we're going to look at. So we're going to look at the second derivative of y minus the first derivative of y plus a quarter lots of y, and that's equal to zero, okay? So first steps first, we look for, it a, we look for a form, you know, we look for a solution of the form uh, y equals e to the rt, okay? And um, first things first, we just put this into, we put this thing into a characteristic equation, okay? So again, remember how I do it, I just write the same thing out again, uh, just so you, you guys can see. Obviously, if I do this myself, I don't, need to, I don't need to worry about this, I just do it automatically. Okay, so let's convert this to an r, let's change this to a two, okay? Uh, let's change this to an r, and we've still got the, uh, that's still got the one up there, so that's fine. And let's just get rid of that, because that's just r to the zero. Okay, so there we are, that's in characteristic equation. That's in characteristic, that's in characteristic form. Uh, and now basically we just try and solve this this quadratic, okay? So what do we end up with? We end up with, um, well this actually, this I can see, if you, you can fiddle with it, you can use the quadratic form and you can do it however you want. But basically I can tell you it goes to my, uh, r minus a half squared, um, and that equals zero. So in other words, r minus a half and r minus a half, okay? And you can verify that either by expanding it out or you can try and use the quadratic formula to come up with it yourself. So in other words, what does that mean? Well, it means that R1 is equal to half, but it also means that R2 is equal to half. So we've got an equal, um, we've got an equal roots case. We've got R1 equals a half and R2 equals a half. So therefore, we can say that we've got an equal roots case that so R1 equals R2. Okay. Now, so basically, we're looking for a form of, of Y equals E to the RT. So in other words, we get Y1. Okay, y1 equals e to the r1 times t. Well, what's r1? It's a half. It's a half. Come on. It's a half. Okay, and we've also got y2 equals e to the r2 times t. Well, what's y2? It's, it's a half again. So it's a half. Okay, so here, because these two things, because these two things are the same, and we want to keep them separate, all we just do is we stick a t out the front of one of the, of one of the solutions. We could equally stick it here, um, but we just basically leave it in front of one of them. So I'll just write that t out a little bit better. There we go. Um, yeah, to kind of keep them separate. So what's our final solution going to be? It's just going to be these two things put together. So it's going to be y1 uh, plus y2. So it's going to be e to the half times t plus t lots of e to the half times t and remember we can have any constants multiplied by that any any constant we like so the general form is going to be any constants multiplied through and that is our general form now say if we have some now say if we have some you know some initial conditions some initial data to kind of find out what we can use to find out what, which we can use to find out what c1 and c2 is so let's say for example we have the initial data um, that when t is zero and um, we plug it into this, this formula, we end up with, or this equation, we end up with two, okay? And the first derivative, when t is zero, uh, is a half, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you, now I'm gonna leave you to do that yourself. I'm not actually gonna do it in this video, um, but I'm gonna leave you to do it yourself, and you should get that y of t is equal to two e to the half times t minus a half lots of e to the half times t. If you're not sure, go back and look at my last video, okay, which I went through this, um, but because I've been through it before, I'm not really gonna worry. Basically, the idea is you just put t equals zero, so you put t equals zero into this thing, so you replace t by zero, okay, uh, and you come up with an expression for, sorry, there should be a c1 and c2, sorry, no, that is the answer, <laughs> that is the answer. <laughs> I've confused myself there, so that's the answer. In other words, what we try and do is we try and put t equals zero into that thing and set it equal to two, and you get an, you get an expression for c1 and c2, okay? Um, it's a little bit trickier this time because you've got t, but that shouldn't worry too much, and actually, in fact, it should make it easier. In other words, you should be able to read off what it is directly. Um, and then if you just, and then if you find the first derivative and set t equals zero, you find out that, uh, and set it equal to half, you should find out basically what c1 and c2 is equal to. Okay, and this is the answer which you should get.